Hi everyone, this is TJ Snyman again. Um, I decided to add a part 5 to this tutorial and all I'm going to do in this uh, in this one in section number 5 is to show you what is going to happen from this final CAD drawing that you see here that we finished in part 4 to the final wax that's been cut on the milling machine. I just went and finished up the last few little cutouts for the uh, diamond seeds as you can see there, I can do a quick rendering, you can see it better. Those where the diamonds are going to sit in, and when the wax is done, I'll just drill the, the azures, which is the through holes through there, and I'll just drill the little holes for the side diamonds. So, um, without further ado, let's go ahead. We're going to save this drawing right now, it's a, it's a Rhino drawing. We're going to file save as, and we're going to save this as a STL file, which is a stereo lithography type of file which is being read by the uh, CAM software that I'm going to use. So um, we're saving that file. Um, that's the right time. We're going to overwrite the previous one that I saved. There's a few parameters that you have to set to give you a nice clean drawing. Um, the density, the maximum angles. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get into this. Uh, we say OK. And um, as you can see, it's building the uh, the meshes. We're at 5,900 polygons. Um, export project. We do it as a binary, and that is it. It's saved. Now, um, I did I did save one as an ASCII version of this file, and the ASCII version of the STL file looks like this. Every uh, paragraph pretty much uh, represents one of the polygons. You'll see the vertices coordinates in a three-dimensional three uh, world coordinate system. And this is the ASCII version. We saved it in the binary. And there's quite a few lines here. When you scroll down to the very bottom of the file, and there you can see um, it is um, column 65. It is uh, 1, 2, 3, 1.2 million lines of code which is a pretty big file so I'm gonna close this up and then um, I'm gonna close up Rhino and then open up um, Proto Wizard which is gonna take us through the cam section of this of this ring and um, we are gonna get it on the mill and hopefully everything is gonna come out exactly like you see uh, right now on the screen a three-dimensional wax drawing that I'm gonna use to cast the gold with Okay, I have opened Proto Wizard. Proto Wizard is a CAM program. Um, now, th what this software does, it generates two paths. A two path is a line that it creates to for, and it tells the machine to follow the line, the, the line in order for the bit that spins at pretty high resolution, uh, roughly about 10,000 RPMs, to follow the line, and it's cutting around uh, this model that we're looking at, the blue one, to form a tool path to cut this this um, this ring out. Um, this is pretty much the same as the previous program we use. It just uh, generates tool paths. We don't draw on this program. And um, let's get going. There's a few options. I'm not going to get too too deep into this program. This is a whole tutorial by itself, um, and it gets a little complicated. But um, I'm going to touch on the uh, most essentials just for you to get a feel as to how we generate the, the tool paths. So there's a few parameters on this, uh, on a few options we can do. We are going to do a ring a rotary, um, and we're actually going to do two sides full rotary. We're going to cut one side, then that's going to flip over, and then we're going to do the other side. Then we're going to break it out at these tabs, that like little spokes that you see, and then we're going to mount it on a spindle, and then we're going to cut the rest of them. So let's go to my next option. Uh, the model has not been rotated correctly. Okay, so what we want to do? Oh, let me scale it up a little bit. Um, we want to rotate. So we want the um, the radial around the x-axis, which means we are going to go to the x-axis. We do rotate. <coughs> x-axis so we're actually going to spin it on the z-axis right now and apply 90 degrees on that so there we go um, now it's rotated and oriented right with the z-axis there's a blue line facing up 
the Y axis facing back toward, back away from us into the screen and the X axis left to right. Okay, let's go on. Next. Okay, what we see now is what we just saw um, the previous little uh, screen was uh, the spokes which is generated by these little blocks and lines. Um, inside this, uh, that's called the core. The core is going to have a little triangle cut and a hole through it. And that's going to be, uh, the hole is for the bolt to assemble this piece of wax after it's been cut on both sides. Okay, there's a few options I just want to uh, I will show you we have the maximum diameter which is formed from the green circle we have a 30 millimeter diameter the thickness of my actual wax I'm going to use is 13 um, and then there's a different core parameters and options that you can set but let's go on to the next screen this screen is our tool selection we have uh, you can use two tools in this case I'm only going to use one tool which is a, a, f a 10 degrees uh, cone cut bit and yes our tool selection is various ones um, all different kinds of ball mills you can use uh, parameters you can set on this screen you set your feed rate at millimeters per minute and I am gonna go s very slow on this one because it's a very it's gonna cut very deep and we're gonna run at 8,000 um, right now I don't wanna go thousand okay okay and then I'll select the tools we are going to use uh, in this case a five thousand uh, actually we're going to use a conical mill we're going to use a 10 degree actually you know what I normally do in this case I pick a 15 degree five thousandths and um, then I replace my my bit in the mill with a 10 10 degree bit because it I found that um, if you were a little bit out on your model it saves you that little extra cone that you lose detail on so okay this screen is good and let's go back and I'm gonna set all this and I'll show you the next screen the next screen um, shows us um, the rapid position height for the tool on the z-axis and we're not going to duplicate so we start calculating the tool path this takes a few minutes so uh, we will just um, wait for this to go through and we'll be back the um, the calculation for the tool paths on the on the both sides the flip sides are done and it's busy on the um, the rotary tool path now so it's going to be a little while still we're almost there okay we finished generating a tool path so let's go to side one tool path one what we're looking at here is um, thousands of little tool paths running over this ring I can see if I can zoom in for you a little bit if you can remember correctly the um, the little beadwork what's gonna go what's gonna happen is gonna go plunging down in the middle of the ring come up over the side over our little channels and down to the middle of the ring and you can see it's gonna create these little wagon wheels um, that's gonna hold the wagon spokes that's gonna hold the whole ring in place um, if I show you the rotary tool path really quick um, let's go a little smaller uh, the same thing this is gonna go around the whole model in a radial pattern um, it's gonna start probably uh, it's gonna start zero on the z-axis zero I mean, let me zoom in and here you can see the actual beadwork that's going to go around the diamonds and it's going to go you can see it plunge down to the middle of the sun come up going down and there's thousands and thousands of little tool paths created all over the ring so um, after this we're going to store this um, as a tap file tap file and from here it's going to go over to my cam software that's going to tell my mill to uh, to use these tool paths and uh, generate the G code for it. That's um, in the next few minutes. 